The Bible says that the disciples asked Jesus, teach us how to pray, as John taught his disciples how to pray. Why didn't they ask Jesus to teach them how to walk on water? Why didn't they teach Jesus? Why didn't they ask Jesus to teach them how to deliver people, to heal the sick? Why didn't they ask Jesus how to overcome the Pharisees when they want to kill you? Why isn't that just prayer? Ha! Huh. And you know, it hit me, this thing, that everything that Jesus was doing, Jesus was with these men. When he was eating, he was with them. Hallelujah. When he was commanding the storm to keep quiet, he was with them. Everything he was doing, he was with them. The one thing that Jesus used to do alone was pray. <laughs> so we are eating with him. We are sleeping at the same place, but we cannot cast trees, but he's casting trees. Now, I realized that these disciples were lichunguza, and they discovered that the only thing that this man does alone, which could be the secret of his life, is prayer. That was my turn around. That was my turn around. Because they realize, easy if we ask him to lay hands on the sick to be healed, easy if it was water, if he's imparting us, we are with him day and night. But the thing he does, because he used to tell them, say, here, I'm going to pray. He would leave the 12, then leave the three, and then go. Then they look at him from behind the bush. What does this, what is this man saying? And then when he comes, he's walking on water. But we have, with, we have been with him the whole time. The only time we are not with him. And you know, it seems like the power is increasing even as his days are increasing. It must be prayer. It must be prayer. The secret must be prayer. And you see, I've told you that. And somebody, it has not touched you. But that was the revolution of my life. A, it is prayer. Then I realized that that prayer that Jesus used to pray, the Bible says that even today, he is at the right hand of the Father making intercession for us. God is good. He is not commanding the Holy Spirit. He is not commanding God. He is praying for us. A, he prayer and it serious. Whether I'm tired, whether I'm what, I should systematize my life to be able to pray to get results in Jesus' name. Whatever God wants to do in your life at times will be stopped because of the spiritual dimension of your life in this season. But I tell you, any change and every change that happens to a child of God, the foundation of it is prayer. Prayer is the first place where revival starts. Prayer is the first place where change begins to take place. Pray that you may not fall into temptation. Not pray against temptation, but be in an attitude of prayer. Automatically, there are things that you will not do. Hallelujah. When you are soaking very well in prayer, no matter the tempter that is coming in your direction, you'll be able to overcome them in Jesus' name. I tell you, if I call for the service, the service one day I was hearing Miles Monroe say that, that uh, they call for different meetings in church, but the meetings that they call about prayer are the ones that are least attended. <laughs> Monroe is dead a long time ago, but that is the system even of today. God is good. But prayer is that place where doors are unlocked in Jesus' name. Prayer is that place where you discover your real value in Jesus' name. Prayer is that place where the world discovers you also in Jesus' name. Prayer is that place where the spiritual atmosphere around you changes. It will not change by desire. It does not even change by seed. Prayer changes the spiritual atmosphere around you. God is God. You hear, there's a man called Smith Wigglesworth. Smith Wigglesworth used to pray. He said he never prayed for more than 30 minutes. But then again, he never spent more than 30 minutes without prayer. Hallelujah. He never prayed for 30 minutes. I mean, about two, five hours, he was equal to 30 minutes only. But then he would also not go beyond 30 minutes without praying. But we read from history that one day he was in a train and the way they are seated there, somebody started to scream. 
that I'm being convicted that I'm a sinner by being close to you. Pray for me for salvation. Oh my God, there are dimensions of results that are yet to come. Say my amen. amen. Prayer. Tell your neighbor prayer. Yeah. Hallelujah. You know, prayer builds a force around you. Let me tell you something about a prayerful man. The Bible says that the enemy will come in one direction. They will scatter in seven directions. A prayerful man, attack of the enemy will bounce on the fire that is surrounding you and it will go scattering. You don't need to care what they are planning against you. You are connected with the Holy Spirit. You are connected with the fire of God. And this one happens by soaking in prayer. Ah, the mouth of the lion will be shut. How can it bite a prayerful man? God is good.